With me is Jeremy Weir, CEO and Executive Chairman of Trafigura Group. Today, you're publishing your annual results. We're going to be discussing those. So can you quickly summarise how was the year and how did it build on 2020? Good morning, Claire. It's a, it was a volatile year. It was a year which uh, we saw a continuation of the previous year. Highly volatile markets, dislocated supply chains, customers having challenges to be able to move products from A to B, and we were there to service them during those, those challenging periods. So it was a strong year. We had uh, our commercial teams really did performed extremely well. Following on from the previous year, record year, our oil, uh, petroleum and gas divisions had again very robust period. We had a record performance from our non-ferrous uh, minerals and metals divisions and we had a record performance from our bulk commodities divisions. So from a commercial aspect, the teams did extremely well and were able to navigate what was a very, very challenging period. But there were some sort of, you know, concerns. You know, our operations were adversely affected by the COVID situation. Supply chains were problematic. And we also had, unfortunately, you know, six fatalities, three contractors, three employees. And we're really looking forward to doing a much better job in that area for 2022. As you say, it was a record year, but you have been operating in a climate of great uncertainty and change. It has been. We've Obviously, we've got a period of energy transition which is taking place. Uh, we also had continuation of the uh, pandemic, which we saw supply chain disruptions. That impacted you know, supply chains, not just for us, but for our customers. We were able to focus upon them to really provide them the support, regardless of market conditions. The freight markets were extremely volatile as well. So really, a lot of challenges thrown at us during that period. So with all these challenges, what would you say was really your recipe for success, given, as you say, it was a record year? We've got uh, very good teams across the world, you know, strong people with great knowledge and, with, uh, and really have very client focused in their business. But you have to have very strong discipline and good risk controls. So therefore, you know, combining those together with good information flows that exist across the entire network of our commercial activities, that was really key to ensure that we could perform during these uh, you know, extremely volatile periods. You've done a lot of investments in this new source of energy supply, you know, this transition to the electric vehicle battery market. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, I mean, we are in a transition. I think transition is the key word because people think we can turn the switch on and move to something from oil into sort of the new markets. Well, it's going to take some time, but we divested uh, the, the Matza mine, which we've had held for, for 15 years, uh, invested in, in Prony Resources, a nickel mine in, in New Caledonia. We changed the back-end processing facility at Terrafame in Finland, which is very much tailored for the battery market. We have assisted the DRC government in the establishment of the EGC cobalt supply chain. So there's been a lot of proactive work there. And we've also got our venture capital arm, which is very exciting because that enables us to sort of look at new technologies and how they can be applied to our business, to our industry. And there was the recapitalization of Puma too. Correct. I mean, Puma has been uh, obviously part of the group for a long period of time. We saw one of the shareholders, you know, wanting to exit that asset. So we, uh, you know, we worked hard and, uh, and really have reconsolidated that business, changed management, renewed focus. So then bringing it back, back to the fold, if you like, uh, very significant direction of where we want to travel and a significant focus on delivering performance for that business. You did take a 10% minority stake in Vostok Oil. So how does that fit into this transition to clean energy sources? So we invested in Vostok. It's a, it's a, it's a large, uh, large field. It is uh, low sulphur. And uh, the operator, Rosneft, and the main shareholder are really working very hard to you know, reduce the carbon footprint of that production. And they expect it to be in the region of 25% of typical sort of new fields. So therefore, it will be a low carbon producer of oil. You've told us about some of the highlights. What about some of the uh, challenges? It, it has been uh, you know, challenging conditions for operational assets. Safety performance, you mentioned, was not good enough. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know as I said, the commercial departments have, have worked well. You know, the challenge, they're also within the marketplace, having highly volatile markets and also very high commodity prices, you know, a turnover of $230 billion when it was $150 billion the year before requires a lot of financing, a lot of capital to be able to perform in those markets and be able to provide the service and fund the cargoes you move from, from sourcing to, to delivery to customer. And, you know, that's been a challenge, but our finance teams and our commercial teams have worked extremely well to try and manage that. 
but uh, you know, the assets do need further work. Nearstar has done well. It's turning around its assets base well. Uh, it is being challenged by the very high energy prices that exist in Europe. I mentioned the fatalities before. We have to change, and we are addressing that in 2022. Puma you mentioned as well because that requires a lot of focus and that is getting a lot of focus by the management team and by the new executives running that business. So therefore, we're doing well. We still have a lot of work ahead of us to do for 2022. You said that the power and renewable energy business, you're going to grow it to become a third pillar along with oil and petroleum products and metals and minerals. So how's that going in terms of new ventures? Well, there's two parts really on the commercial side. This year was our first full year of our power trading team. They performed very well and had some you know, good results and they're building out the team, which is very positive. And we've also established the carbon trading team, which, is, uh, which is, has enormous potential, not just for understanding our own carbon footprint and how we manage that, but also providing third party services to our existing client base. So very exciting developments in that area. On the asset side, you know, we have Nala Renewables. This is a, uh, a division which was established. We've got a new CEO in that division. It's a joint venture with IFM, and we, we've invested in uh, a platform called Swift. We're developing a battery energy storage system uh, in Belgium, uh, associated with our Nearstar businesses. And we've also got a very good pipeline of, of potential investments in, in solar, aeolian, and also in, uh, in battery as well. So a really exciting period there. Also, we have our venture capital arm. Uh, this is where we've invested effectively in new technologies associated with mobility, energy storage. So we have made investments in carbon capture systems, in hydrogen, and also in, uh, in battery technology. What is interesting is one of them has been H2 Energy, which is really becoming a mainstay as we're developing from, uh, you know, from the existing business or investment that we have here in Switzerland uh, to a much broader based platform across Europe and looking at some exciting investments in the hydrogen and ammonia space. You set scope one and two targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. You've committed to scope three by 2023, but I believe you're ahead of schedule. We're well on target for our scope one and two emissions. And with respect to scope three, you know, shipping reflects 85% of our emissions. And therefore we've announced today a 25% reduction of our emissions intensity and we're well on the target of doing that in terms of how we can approach that. And that's going to be done through slow steaming, better routing of vessels, and also using non-hydrocarbon fuels. So you've got the efforts on setting various targets, including scope three. What else are you doing to decarbonise shipping? Okay, we're part of the Getting to Zero Coalition. Uh, this is a group of uh, up to 200 companies which is called to action to reduce the carbon footprint in shipping. Furthermore, we, uh, we were part of Glasgow. We attended uh, COP26, whereby we were part, uh, we were part of the First Movers Coalition, uh, which was established by uh, Secretary Kerry. And through that process, what we've committed to is to build um, six ammonia carrier vessels, um, which also can use ammonia as its primary fuel source. The technology is not there yet, but we actually are investing in that technology. We're co-sponsoring with uh, MAN engines to produce ammonia engines, two-stroke marine engines. You have got a business model, this employer shareholder model, which really differentiates you uh, from many other companies and groups. Where do you see the strength in that? For me, it's, it's actually been proven over the last two years more than ever. It, what it means is you have alignment. The, you know, the, 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 the thousands staff which are shareholders you know have alignment you know with the with the major stakeholders which with their customers you know with the, with the financiers with the various social groups we interact with so it's very important that people understand that the performance of the business is not just here today what happens tomorrow it is a very long term process and that for me is very very critical there's a duty of care as well when you have highly volatile markets you need to understand what this means and i think it means a, a, a high degree of collaboration across the various decks and divisions. So again, it's very, very important and I think it's, a, it's one of the key successes of our organisation. Let's move forward then to next year. What sort of market conditions are you anticipating? I think if you asked two weeks ago, we were probably looking at something slightly quieter. Now we've got a new sort of strain of the, of, of the COVID virus and we've seen enormous volatility in just the last two weeks. I think we're going to continue to see this volatility occur. And so therefore, you know, almost a repeat of previous years. But we're well positioned for that. We've demonstrated 
that we as an organization can manage our business through these periods. I think we're going to see higher commodity prices. I think we're going to see further challenges on liquidity, on being able to finance our business. But we've demonstrated that we can do that. We have the analytical capabilities, we have the advanced analytics, we have the commercial teams which can respond properly, and we've given uh, our asset divisions you know, clear direction of what we expect and to provide the right support. So I'm very confident we can do very well, but a very volatile period. Do you think that ESG, the Environmental, Social and Corporate Governance, is going to be a continued focus next year? It's, uh, it's incredible how this has been a major focus on, on various stakeholders uh, on our business. And we're, we've, we've treated this very importantly. Um, we've established a new committee, a board committee as part of that, uh, you know, uh, to ensure that we have the appropriate focus at, at management level. And uh, to me, it's extremely important. It's important from a financing point of view, because basically we've done a, you know, we did an ESG-linked uh, financing facility last year as part of our European revolving credit facility. And, uh, and so therefore, as we perform to certain key metrics, you know, our cost of funding will reduce. So again, major focus, and I think this is, uh, we're, just, we're just starting this journey. So 2022, is it going to be as good as 2021? Well, I don't have the crystal ball in front of me, but what we have got, we've got a solid foundation for continuing to perform regardless of what the markets throw at us. We are expanding our business platform. There's a lot of exciting things. We are moving well in the energy transition. I think we're well positioned you know, versus our peers in this sector. So really, I'm very, very encouraged by the trajectory of the business, how to manage that business regardless of the environment we're operating within. And so therefore, the outlook to me looks very bright.